Yeah, hello and welcome to the last synth of the DES 12 hours of Bad Thirst race. It is me, Comfyuser 3, the guy who drives badly. And we have another guy who drives badly in the chat. We have Nushel here. Hello. Uh, gotta make the volume a bit louder. So, okay. Uh, the, the stint will start in about two minutes. Um, yeah, stream is, should be working now. Maybe, um, Nushel, you can check. Because I don't want to, uh, I don't want to do that while I'm streaming. B otherwise, everything is going to crash. It looks like it's working. That's good. If it looks like that. Yeah, looks like it's also running. But oh, okay. Like Great. Yep. Uh, yeah, I don't know what happened in that uh, stint. I think the pure carnage. <laughs> I think the grid was uh, set up wrongly because uh, one of the GTF drivers was uh, more in front than the others. Uh, it was more in front than it should be, but yeah, probably some. Uh, probably something done wrong in the time document. Yeah, maybe I took the grid order too early, because I guess you didn't put the 10 minute for Helbig in or something. I yeah, don't know. this could be it. I don't know. Anyway, uh, the, the last stint is now starting, and uh, TLL Charlie has no fun, it seems. I'm sorry to hear that. Um, yeah, also a pity that you retired the car. It was a bad day for you guys, so I can understand that. Ah, true. Okay. And back to the view menu again. So, now it should work. The grid for the last synth, RC Comrade in P1, then we have P Gierla and Top Racer. Uh, P Gierla and Top Racer only 3 seconds apart, I think P Gierla is 133 behind Comrade and Top Racer is 136 behind Comrade. Then we have Casey in P4, Distinct Marco in P5, then Haku in P6, um, Mega L in 7th, King Roan in 8th, uh, then Kick Mac in 9th, and Eddie in 10th. And I expect some good performance of Eddie, because he was the one who qualified the Mustang on 3rd place. What do you expect from the stint, Nushul? Um, yeah, probably the same, like, I guess. Comrade should have the best order. Like, he will have to fight for the win of the stint with Marco and maybe Chop. And behind that, it's like, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, Marco, Comrade, and Top will be the guys who will fight it out. And yeah, at least for the stint win. And then maybe Eddie can have a talk about it too, if he, like, finds the decent rhythm. Yeah, if he finds the rhythm and if the Mustang is less tire eat, less uh, tire hungry than in the stints before, then it could work. P6 damage, what? Haku damage, yes. What has he done? Uh, it's just a really, really bad day for DLL. 
Everything goes wrong. They, they can't get a rest. No. I'm really sorry for them. Anyway. Oh no! What? <laughs> We're starting. Oh, who is going in the pits already? Yeah, Haku is going to the pits. Repairing yeah, the Yeah, Yeah. Okay, then we have nine drivers lining up for the start. Let's look at Comrade. And the race has started. Comrade can defend his first position and top got a bit squeezed and had to slow down. Pietrella now with a good slipstream. Uh, this is the same like in stint. Four. This time Comrade defends on the inside and Jörla has to step back. Yeah, Top's probably just letting Marco and KC go for now. A bad start from top, he lost two positions. And yeah, but um, it doesn't harm the moment, I guess, because it's not drivers he's actively fighting. I would have probably done the same, now just wait for my coach to punt everyone else. <laughs> yeah, Mega Isle and uh, King Rome both with a good start, 6th and 7th. Uh, Eddie also two places won. Mac in ninth and Haku out of the pits didn't lose that much time. Yeah, but I think that already takes quite a toll on your motivation. Like, damage your car in the formation then. Both incredibly devastating. Yeah, that's possible. Let's hope he can recover and get a decent stage out. Yeah, that's that's obviously to hope for uh, the. DLL. They went, yeah, so much, uh, they went to so much. They went to so much pain today. That's unbelievable. Eddie up one place again. Slipstream past the Porsche. Yeah, he, op he, op he obviously knows how to handle the Mustang. Unlike his teammates. I didn't say that. Maybe I should join TLL. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, Marco is already on Casey's toe. Goes on the outside line, but the Jaguar is difficult to overtake. It has a lot of top speed. And Marco now outside of the racing line can hold on a bit, but he has to give the position back. Nuschel on smoke. Uh, Benjit asks. No. <laughs> I'm just a little bit annoyed by it. Yeah, but PGR well, like, Sorry? Yeah, what's the point, basically? Like, if you crash and then just roll back on the racing line when there's like a train of cars approaching and then yeah that's yeah. bad luck that's yeah, i mean i i left him again like two laps later <laughs> what on earth was he do was he doing yeah casey uh, can still defend against marco and he will probably now go past my girl. Yeah, it's understandable to be annoyed. Yeah, absolutely. But it is what it is, I mean... I probably wouldn't really have had any chances to get the over when it was, because you were flying in combat. If he doesn't crash like 10 times, like, don't really make up the time. Yeah, I hope all the crashes were only during uh, practice and that he will keep the car straight for today. Yeah, he will. Let's be positive, he will. Yeah, you should have this. I mean, to be honest, I already knew that the second isn't gonna be painful because the first one went way too good. 
What are Marco and Casey doing? They're just wrecking each other? Uh, probably only looked like that. Yeah, maybe. Marco now on the inside Mark. and contact. But Casey was able to hold the position. Maybe Top can benefit now. Too ambitious to go for him. Yeah, it's dangerous to overtake in these sections. And Eddie is already closing in. Uh, Mega L with a penalty, half a second. Probably, probably ran wide at the entry of the curve. Yeah, probably. Like I did in the last lift. That'll be exciting now for P2. It'll be like a five car fight basically. Peachy, Casey, Marco, Klopp and Eddie. Yeah, that's, but it, it's very good for Comrade because he can go away a bit. He can just run away, yeah. And drive his race. All collected and calm. Top. It's shot. Three wide! They're going three wide and top has to yield. It was worth a try, I guess. Yeah, of course. It was a good try. But in the end it was... Ambitious but rubbish. <laughs> Mega fight, three to five. That's how we want to see it. Absolutely. The other stints have been way too boring, so now it's time for some action. But yeah, like I said, like I spoke about this with Javi on the other stint, like for the spectators, these stints are like very nice when cars are fighting. But as a driver, you don't want that. You just want to be on your own and just. Yeah. Marco now on the inside control. again, and this time he makes the move stick. Yep. And sideways on. Yeah, like I said before, that corner is uh, dangerous because you only have grip on the racing line. And uh, only a bit off track and you're understeering into the wall. Seems like Casey is like not on the top space pace. Oh, oh, shot a bit here, but could save it. That's good. But Marco already 1.2 seconds in front and already uh, approaching yep. Peachy. And I think this will be an easy overtake. Yep. Top should now get past Casey. But the Jaguar is very fast on the straights. Uh, top is trying, but too too ambitious. The Jaguar also very good on the brakes. Now with the switchback, maybe it it yeah. works, and top. Has overtaken for now. Now let's see if he can make. Yeah, it looks like the move is stick, and Eddie is also looking for a way past Casey. GTF wants to end the session with a bang. Well, hopefully, not a bang in the wall. Yeah, that's to hope. Yeah, and that's, that's what you said. Get off the racing line and you're just on the steering. But I have to say I'm very impressed by Kate Old Newey. Like, they do a good job. Not causing any troubles. They pretty quick and set before. Yeah, and especially Road Tech was uh, very fast. Yeah, exactly. Very impressive performance. Considering they're newbies. Yeah, and uh, Duggert and Casey both very consistent. Not many mistakes. That's brought to P4, and that's uh, a very good debut, I would say. Absolutely, considering they came from last without even calling Absolutely. 
So comrade is uh, still in f first. Marco is approaching. Has already the fastest lap with a two zero zero nine. King Roma has picked up some damage. So has Doom. True, King Roma with damage and Haku as well. Yep. But I really have to give my respect to uh, DLL and especially the DLL2 team because they're still driving and, yeah, and each of them are driving for six hours yeah each of them driving for six hours also Johnny with uh, very good performances number setting of Pichi with Haku with hearty drives as well top yeah, top has overtaken Pichi this is important because this is an actual fight for positions. PG has an advantage of 3 seconds. Oh, he's trying for the, he's going for the comeback. Outside of yeah, the but on the outside... Uh, you can't really make it stick. Oh, he can. got too high on the curve. He can. The curve well, right there is very dangerous for the Mercedes, like it just... Put the balance of the car so much open, so much speed. Yeah, and uh, it's also possible that you can go into oversteer if you are too long on the curb. Yep. So I saw Flipsy in practice going on over the curb all the time, every lap, and I was like, I can't do that. If I, I do that, I'd, I'd be in the wall every lap. <laughs> Dust Valo uh, has written, Hey Nushal, you are commentating. Yes, <laughs> and I'm so mad. <laughs> Marco already two seconds behind Comrade. He is making gains very fast, but Comrade has a relatively easy job. He just has to bring the car home. He doesn't have to look out for Marco because he's uh, behind him a lot. He's no danger. And P. Chiala is also 90 seconds behind. Top racer is 90 seconds behind. Top running a bit wide and this allows Eddie a chance to attack. And he goes past on the inside. I think Top is playing it smart now. Yeah, I guess so too. Like he's letting Eddie through and let him have his battle with Peachy first and then maybe slip past as well. Maybe Top wants to go over the strategy, or he just really thinks, yeah, just don't do mistakes. Okay, so he's still in the hunt as well. And there's no damage. Mega L running 201s now. Yeah, he's definitely the strongest driver on the car. In Subaru. Yeah, like yeah. the RRC drivers. Yeah, without a doubt. I was, I was very impressed by his first stint. Like he got four, I think. Yes. Very, very good job. Yeah. I also gotta say, like, very impressive performance by your dad second stint like he went from consistently doing 205s to consistently doing 203s and he did a two stop yeah that's on top of it <laughs> yeah, marco is already behind comrade and eddie has overtaken peachy sorry for that in the race after i crashed my dd pro disconnected and i couldn't control my car it di it didn't work the whole race after that. Big sorry to you. Well, 
What can you do? Yeah, it's not the first time that something like this happened. I had the same incident with um, Flipsy in um, the second, uh, in the third race we had in Autopolis, where he's a uh, where his wheel disconnected and he drove straight into me then. <laughs> It is what it is. Yeah. But here, yeah, Marco on the hunt. Comrade will not uh, defend for long, I guess. Comrade's going to pass PG2. Though. Oh. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Unfortunately, we can't show two streams at once. Yeah. Has picked up even more damage. The only thing, the only thing, comrade has on his side is a tire wear. But again, I don't think he will be that much of a hindrance for Marco. Well, I guess it depends. Like, if Marco does something stupid, comrade might want to fight him, but. Now Marco has gone past, and Comrade is now sitting in second. And yeah, Eddie is really driving a good performance here. His tires are still in a pretty good condition compared to the other Mustang drivers which have eaten their tires within a few laps but Eddie seems to be comfortable with it Pop is finding some place to number 203 Yeah, but on the straights, the Mustang seems to be superior. Yeah, it's like the good old American sports car. Can't go through turns, but it's any fast on straights. <laughs> Mega L drifting through corners again. <laughs> it's somehow his his, um, his style. But still only 15 seconds behind Marco, so not lost, not all lost here. Kick Mac driving without damage. King Roan has gotten into the pits, and I think it's the second time he goes into the pits. Lap seven already, and in lap nine as well. This means Haku is not not last. Top is gaining on Eddie. Not much, but he is gaining. Cockpit cam for a bit. Switch to the passenger view. I heard it works for jinxing cars. <laughs> but I like the second uh, cockpit view, that one like you are on the passenger seat. Yeah, yeah that's. That's a better one actually. Makes more sense as a spectator to see this one. Yeah, absolutely, and it uh, swerves with the car. It swerves with the driver to the corners. I do not like many of the features in a GT7's replay or a 
live streaming mode, but this uh, camera is one of the is one of the nice additions. Yeah, too bad we paid the price of losing a lot of other features for it. Exactly. Ichi has picked up some damage. Oh no. All damage. Mega Altoona. Like the wall at the middle. Mm, yeah. That's just strange. Not good. But now let's see what uh, the tactic will be. Will they stay out or... Will they go into the pits? And it seems both PG and Mega L are continuing. Yeah, it makes sense, I suppose. It's all like only the good to the meat markers. Yeah, I think so too. And it's now evening, so the track temperature is a bit uh, lower and tire wear isn't that much of an issue because the afternoon stint was very critical I yeah I, I think I was struggling so much compared to the first stint I did yeah um, also the pace was a uh, relatively slow yeah I, was, I almost got the fastest lap but I missed it by five hundreds or something when I tried to go for it I don't even think I went under two minutes and if then it it was probably only 159.9. Yeah, I did I did like this one um, 59.7 and everything else was just way above two minutes. And I was struggling quite a bit on tires. Like in the first sim, my tires didn't really go over like 79 the right rear, which is the one I'm struggling the most with. Mm -hmm. And then the second sim that I did now, it was like at 86 times. Yeah. I even need to say the the tire wear was lower than I expected, so I was able to keep keep out for 17 laps in the first stint, and then I knew, yeah, okay, I don't need to look out for the tires that much anymore, so I can go 14 laps relatively easy and without uh, need without the need to worry about the tires go to the end. Comrade has stabilized a bit in pace. Uh, Eddie can't. Yeah, um, top is really wheeling him in now. Yeah. Yeah, Eddie can't make up time anymore, or at least not in the same. Not in the same as before. Was in the same steps as before. Man. Talking is always more difficult than Thinking. writing and listening. Maybe we should just switch to German. Yeah, we could do that. <laughs> Schmetterling, yeah. Salatsauce. Krankenwagen. Naturwissenschaften. <laughs> yeah, but Top is really close now to Eddie. Again He's on getting the left behind on the straights, even in the slipstream. That's but ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> He's catching up a little bit, but... Yeah, but that's on the end of, of the straight, yeah, so... It won't be enough. <laughs> it's useless. smart of top to lap, like to pit next step and go for the undercut. 
Yeah, I think uh, Top is now behind him and wants to save fuel. That's also not a bad idea. Haku now with damage on both sides. Now at least the car should be evenly balanced. Yeah, it's not equally bad in turns. <laughs> Tyrell like Mega L is pretty close to death on his tires. Uh, Casey is pretty close to death on his tires. Peach is really Peach's tires looks good look good. Uh, top race's tires are okay, but the rears are a bit uh, dangerous. Uh, yeah, his rides are more worn on than Eddie is Eddie's looking a bit better, then Comrade is looking good, and Marco is looking okay. Let's see if he turns off his indicator again this time. In his first stint he was driving with it on for like an hour. <laughs> so we did see the same thing. That's good to hear. Then I at least know it was. If it was a mistake, it was for us both. Yeah, we have the next top meme, I guess. After his 85 year stint on the notch level, we now have a one hour yep. indicator stint. Mega L is also going into the pits after 14 laps. Uh, I just hope that he can do 15 laps on the next stints. Not did a really good job. Fuel saving, I just realized. He's like. Yeah, Top has, top has saved a bit of fuel in the slipstream of Eddie. He forgot it again. <laughs> hey, Turn Top. The indicator off. <laughs> yeah, Top, if you are watching the stream, your indicator is still on. Look at King Round. He gets uh, yeah. lapped already. He has rear damage. Too. Has rear damage. Probably spun it into the wall. Apple in the pits. Yep, he had damage as well. Big Mac has picked up damage as well. Oh, but it's just the front. Now we'll only lose a bit of time on the straights. Top is still indicating. How dare he? One hour yeah. penalty for still indicating. <laughs> Eddie going into the pits. Comrade too. The Mitsubishi seems very thirsty. Depends how you drive it. When I was driving it, it was a uh, not. Yeah, you that weren't using a lot of fuel. But yeah, I was short drifting all the time. I realized I could uh, do the same lap times with um, short drifting, so I decided to short shift. Yep, why not? I mean, it's a two-liter turbo turbo engine. What do you expect? That you have to rev it. You like. Yeah. It's natural that it uses a lot of fuel if you rev it out. Yeah. That's how it I just thought, yeah, I don't rev it that much and save a bit of fuel. I'm not that much slower with it. It's not like the Corvette or even worse the Viper that needs to be uh, that needs to gear shifts uh, 
about 1000 RPM below the red line <laughs> because it has no uh, torque anymore. Marco is still out, he is pretty safe now if he goes for 16 laps or uh, 17 then he can go short distance at the end and he's he uh, no, no, that was a late decision and that's a penalty that was a last uh, second decision, yes is it really a penalty? Is it the did he cross the line here with both, uh, with I all four wheels? I or think, like, I mean, it looked like it in the chase cam, but I have no idea where exactly the uh, lines are drawn by the game. I would really like to see where, like, how much you can cut, because I was cutting the entr entries quite a bit too at times, and I didn't get a penalty once. Yeah, I think you need to cut it with all four tires. But... Yeah, and a lot of people were, like, overshooting entry quite a bit yeah that's why i didn't do that no it's not I worth it to just break a little bit earlier and take it easy yeah i break a little bit earlier and this helped yep. me you're right it that's was a three second penalty in considering you're serving it on come out straight it's more like a five second penalty PGL and KickMac also coming to the pits now. Uh, PGL's front tires look very good, but the rear tires are. yeah, they were shot. Comes out before KC, but KC now with the. Overspeed. With the speed from the exit. May attack. Ask who. Tornado asked, has Ku pitted? Yes, he has. Peachy was able to defend. Who oh, has really closed the gap on um, Comrade, and he, he just did the fastest step. He's on fire. Must be the indicator. I just Maybe wanted I to say that. Maybe I should have put mine on as well. Warning lights all the time. But yeah, Marco now has lost a lot of time. And is getting overtaken again by Comrade. And probably by top two. Oh, it might be close. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't attack barely. Marco. I wouldn't attack Marco. Marco has the um, tradition of punting you off. If you are, or at least blocking the racing line. Let's say it this way. Comrade with a little bit of grass, but no problem. Top and Marco, they still have a history together. They have a story open from the fourth stint, where Marco uh, decided the stint and by the overtakes made contact with Top. Maybe Top wants some revenge now. But Marco looks. Uh, Pretty collected, six tenths faster oh, in this sector gosh. alone. That was a sketchy entry into the S despite top. Yeah, but the Nissan always looks a bit sketchy. And now even with 
the slipstream. Could be even faster. Two tenths now. But still on route for a uh, fastest lap. And it is uh, closer than I thought, but it's the fastest lap for Marco. Enter the gaps after uh, the stint is finished because I'm streaming and I can't do that. Yeah, no worries. Then we can also announce the provisional results for this race. Very provisional. Yeah, I think the quick results. Uh, the quick results table is. One of the better ideas we had. We don't have many, but we have some. <laughs> Indeed. Okay, let's switch it up a bit. Let's look at the others. We have Eddie in fourth, uh, five seconds behind top. Then we have Peachy, 25 seconds behind Eddie. KC in 6th and Mega Al is closing in then Kick Mac another 36 seconds behind then Haku 6 seconds behind Kick Mac and King Roan is 27 seconds behind Haku and ha still has rear damage what? everyone else is without damage at the moment yeah. Just another usual usual sight in this race at the moment. Comrade with a good lap as well, 159.7. As well, even faster. This lap. Okay, these things. Marco is uh, closing in. Does he go for the attack? Yes. And Comrade lets him through. Smart decision. Yeah, that was smart. Marco has nothing big to do. Fights. In the big picture, Marco has nothing to do with the with the race result. So, just let him go. Is uh, I see Comrade is running the wrong library because Knight should also be on the. On the rear window, but somehow he is. Yeah. You know, and I even posted the link in the RC chat. You even tagged him. Even tagged him. I'll keep an eye out on your brother. See how he's, he's catching up in case he. Okay. Oh, top has a uh, top has picked up a penalty of half a second.
then let's look at Casey and Megael because they are around half a second apart. Exactly. Yeah, the, the other comfy, <laughs> the, the mega comfy. Mega comfy. That decent exit here. That's a good first sector turn, 88. And then, and if one of us uh, gives birth to a son or a, a child... I doubt any of you two will. <laughs> At least not personally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not me. But uh, if we if we get a child once, maybe we should call him then Giga, Giga Comfy or Giga Chat. Yeah, but uh, Casey came through to this section uh, very well. Yeah, he's doing quite good on the mountain. Like, on the straight lines, your brother's doing better here. Especially with the person who lost the corner, it seems like he's getting better exits. Yeah, the WRX is very good at the exit of corners. It's a bit like the Lancer, but a bit weaker overall. At least for me, it was. I think like, the Mercedes is very, very strong on uh, corner exits if you focus on getting them correct. Yeah, true. It's kind of funny when you have the radar on and you're just leaving everyone in the dust on corner exits. And then they come back at you with corner entries. Just a sacrifice entry for exit speed. I think you have to do a GT because you gain so much time on the straights if you get a decent exit on the King Ron has gone into the pits, and if we look in front, we have Marco two seconds in front of Comrade and another two seconds in front of Top, then five seconds to Eddie. So Top four are quite close together, still. Yep, all within 10 seconds. Top also with a personal best in the second sector. He's, he's putting the hammer down. Still two tens and um, still two tens advantage if he gets this done at the end oh. of the lap. Oh, maybe overshot a bit. What happened there? Yeah, he lost it on the entry. Just got with the on the grass with the rear right. Oh, I see. Yeah, but yeah, no dirty tires. At least uh, no damage. Yep. So we're still good. As we ride into the sunset. Yeah, now Eddie with his monsters V8 might get a chance. Well, technically, to Top has the bigger V8. Top should have 6.8, and the Mustang, I think, has a 5 liter. So. Yeah, but I mean. But at least he couldn't. Uh, he could save it for now, he could defend. He has better tires. Yeah, yeah, he has better tires because he pitted later. Oh, okay. And he generally had uh, better tires throughout the stint. Oh, now Eddie has picked up damage and a penalty. Has cut, uh, has uh, been a bit too aggressive in the dipper section and 
plant it Why with no Why are we saying things? <laughs> huh? Why are we saying things? Yeah. Why are we doing that? it for everyone. Oh, top overshot it again. Now his concentration seems to be lost. Yeah, well, P2 is uh, still in reach because he's 30 seconds in front of Pichella, but... At least he's turned his indicator off now. <laughs> Comrade also with a good job, 159.5. Great laps he puts together. And it seems he finally got the, got the key out of the Lancer. Uh, GT Eckert, there's a lot going on, but we want to say thank you for the great event and the super streamers. We had fun and hope to be able to start at the next event. Go Team GTA! Yeah, thank you Ilke. Uh, same goes to you. Thanks for participating with your teammates. Has been a lot of fun. Uh, if we are super streamers, uh, at least for myself, I wouldn't say that. Uh, Flipsy, yeah. Javi, probably also a good streamer, but me? Uh, probably not. <laughs> Don't talk yourself down. I can do that very well. Yeah, I am uh, in the same boat with you, so... <laughs> but I was told to buckle that. You're doing a fantastic job. You have a kind soul. I can't imagine anyone doing a better job at streaming the sixth stint of this event. Okay, let's switch a bit. Uh, top has lost a bit of uh, ground to PG, of course, due to the mistake. It's still 28 seconds, it's still a lot, but still not a gap to be relaxed, ab to be relaxed about. Then PG, three seconds in front of Casey, which uh, is only one second second in front of uh, Mega L. Aku has picked up damage again. True. Eddie also still with the front damage. Aku. 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 DLL. <laughs> Last remaining warrior of the... Yeah, top is closing in on Eddie again. Uh, and he's hit the apex, <laughs> which is not a good idea on this track most of the time. Yeah, normally you would say hitting the apex is a good idea. Yeah, but not here. <laughs> At least not literally. Okay. Yeah, but I guess even with the, the damage of the front split, to the Mustang will be a weapon on the straights. He's losing quite a bit of ground, but it's not as bad as probably in other cars if they have more damage. Yeah, probably two or three tenths lost it's on the straight here, but it's. You still need uh, to be close about 0 0.7 or 0 0.6 seconds to really profit from the slipstream. Oh, space is really dropping off right now. Let's hope he can get his head down. Mm, uh, what happened? 
Oh, I think he just, uh, too old. A bit of frustration about this, even messing up the chase twice. Well, let's look at PTR for now. Uh, also a good lap time to 01296 uh, as the best lap so far. That's a good lap time and I just see uh, Marco has smashed the lap record with a 158.870. That was ridiculous. Yeah, I was able to drive a 159.2 in practice, but nowhere near this in the race. I mean, this this is qualifying pace, and qualifying they're doing without tire wear and fuel, so... True. But Comrade has already been uh, on a faster lap than in qualifying, so... Obviously, the, the car, the Lancer, really sucked in qualifying, but... Top seems to be going for it now. Yeah, he's going for a move on Danny. On the inside, but... Uh, lost it on the curb again. Yeah. But maybe after the two left-handers, he has a chance again to attack. Good exit out of the corner. But I don't think it's the right time to make the overtake stick now. For the first long straight here, maybe yeah, I still half a second behind, so I don't think this will be a move here. But maybe he can save a bit of fuel behind him. really struggling in these turns. Uh, top is faster but obviously he can't get past here in this section. Maybe if he gets a decent exit up. Yeah, now should be fine. He's four tenths behind him. He doesn't miss the breaking point. This should be it. If he uses the suck, then he can go past. And I think Eddie he has also successfully used the suck. Yeah, I also think Eddie uh, has just let him passed a bit because he indicated with the, yep. with the rear that he can go past on the right side. Yeah, I would have expected him to go into the pits now maybe after that, but maybe he's just letting him go and try to follow the game a bit, like make up something that he uses on the straight so it's, it's really Very aggressive on the on the exit of turn one. Yeah, the car's re not really a uh, problem on that exit. It's mainly like if you go on like on inner curves, they have a problem. Outer curves not so much. Like this one too, you can pretty much ride the curve. Oh, Casey has picked up damage. This allows, uh, this could allow Megal the chance to get closer and maybe go past. He's not making up that much time. The Jaguar is an absolute rocket on the straight. Yeah, 
but now with the damage she's struggling to turn here as well. So maybe Mega out and make something stick. Yeah, let's wait. Yep. Wait and see. He's coming closer. And Casey. He almost thought he overshot it, but he really throws very well through the section here. But Mega now with a good exit out of out of this corner, and with the slipstream he could maybe go past, but still he. Even mid damage, he makes up so little ground to the ultra fast Jaguar here on the inside now. Thanks, later. Can he make a mistake? No. No, uh, Megal goes into the grass. Yeah, on the outside, an overtake is always difficult. Talk about now, he goes into the pits anyways. And Megal goes into the pits. worth a try I guess. Could have worked. Could have worked. Obviously leaving Eddie behind now. But he will probably go into the pits this lap. Yeah I, I think he needs to go this lap. He won't come another lap with this amount of fuel. Need around five percent more. But Comrade has to pit as well. Marco does not have to pit for now. He can still go on for two more laps, I guess. goes into the pits as well as expected that was a nice entry into the pits I think he went through perfectly and Eddie in the pits as well has a bit more fuel but has to repair the damage, which will cost two or three seconds uh, additionally. PGL up, now arriving on the straight. Comrade can get out already. I don't think uh, Top will get past PGL. And for now it's second place for RX2 in the big picture and third in the stint. Yeah, they're going for different strategies, but Peachy has damage. Yeah, I think Peachy wants to stay out for one or two more laps and then uh, pit so and that he... So we can do 14 laps since uh, now we have uh, Casey in the pits. And Mega Isle has damage after the pit stop. Oh no. And with this, uh, Casey is in front again. And Mega Isle has to do all the work again. And he has damage. Yeah. Do the work with damage. That's frustrating. Yeah, not everything can go perfectly. Who are you saying that to? <laughs> hmm. Hmm, shut up. <laughs> I wasn't attacking you. Oh, 
they served a penalty and appropriately shot the redemption of sin. Yeah, I think uh, Mega Ellis in the overall picture only fighting DL2, but he would have to catch up five minutes. Yeah, I think this is very difficult taking these five minutes, but they are also fighting against the fourth, um, against the fourth RRC team, against King Rowan, against the Dutch team, and I think against them it looks good. So I think it could be a P7 finish or something. Yep. Or even P6 because DLL1 retired. Yeah, um. Yeah, DLL1 is there out of the picture already. Yeah, okay. Now Marco has gone into the pits. Comrade now arriving on the Conrad's raid. He crashes there with the arena to Conrad's raid. True. <laughs> Top against PG. Uh, Top will probably make the overtake sick. PG has damage and needs to pit soon anyway. Essentially, we go back to P2 with that. Yes. Oh, yeah, Pichi goes into the pits. He's doing the pit entry correctly. I don't think this will uh, lead to any penalty. Interesting now is uh, will PG come out in front of Casey or will he land behind him? I think it should be enough to stay in front of him. But I could be wrong. No, he's uh, finished uh, tanking up and he's already at the exit. And we'll probably have about a uh, five second gap to Casey. Yeah, six seconds. Was a second off. Shame on me. Now Megal is pitting again. Probably only repairing damage. Even changing tires, okay. Look at King Rowan for a bit. Uh, his rear tires are in a condition where they are still okay, but the balance shift could appear at every moment. And once that happens, then the car will get oversteer even more and will get difficult to drive. That's why we advise to not use the Porsche, but they wanted to use the Porsche anyway. A 
and that's already with a card that is that has only only um, a weight distribution of 45 55 now let's imagine how it would uh, look oh, like. Oh, Marco and Kickmack got together. Marco has picked up damage. Oh no. Yeah, like that's really the problem with him, I'd say. Like, you, even if you're lapping someone, just stay behind and get past on the straight. Like, cost you maybe a second or so. And now he's got damage very early in the stint. Yeah, I had the uh, I had the situation in the in the fifth stint that uh, our player was in the way of the of road tech, and I was able to make up about two seconds of ground and overtake road tech at the Conrad on the Conrad straight at the beginning of it. But then I thought, yeah, it's probably not fair, and even though it wasn't uh, discussed between me and um, our player, it is unfair if I overtake him like that, so I gave back the position. I had the, like, when I was uh, approaching our player, trying to level, he was also going in, like, he was breaking for every turn on top of the mob, like those sweeping ones, where you just actually just lived, like, I personally just lived there. And he was breaking, and then he broke even harder because I was close to him, and it threw me off a little bit as well. Uh, Dexbex uh, asked, where can I see the ranking of the complete race? Um, are you on the Discord server? Then you can see it, or you can also see it in the document we have ready. But um, maybe, maybe Nushul can go through the gaps again. Oh, and yeah, sure. Right, so... Yeah, we have RRC1 in the lead. Uh, um, that's RRC Comrade driving, that's the Mitsubishi Lancer. Yeah, and he is at the moment... Like, this is based on the start of the stint, so right now it's probably a bit different. He was he started the stint 1 minute 30 ahead of Eric's 2, which is uh, GTR in the GTR. And then two seconds behind that is Top Racer in the Mercedes. And if we're looking at the picture now, Top has gone past because he's about 45 seconds ahead of PG now. Then in fourth, we have KWE. They're two minutes 50 behind the lead. That's our KC and the Jaguar. Then fifth is Eric Swan, which is Marco, who's currently leading the stint. They're 6 minutes 17 behind the leader. E6 is DLL1, they have retired the car. P7 is uh, DLL2, which is uh, Aku, and they are all 13 minutes 45 behind. Then P8 is RRC3, which is uh, Mega L and Subaru. He's uh, 18 minutes to 22 behind. Five seconds behind that is our King Ron and the Porsche. And P10 is GTA, 19 minutes 5 behind. Um, that's Kickmack in the second AMG Mercedes. And P11 is uh, GTF, which uh, is Eddie and the Mustang. And P12 is DLL3, who has retired the car after the first set. Thank you, Noshu. No, Top has spun it. Oh no. And he has picked up damage. Yeah, and Zero and Haku all, all uh, Haku almost crashed into these guys. Almost crashed into top. But yeah, that's unfortunate. This gives Eddie the chance to get past top again. 
but I don't think Toku put up too much of a fight because A, he can't, and two, he's not actively racing any anyways. And thirdly, he's not that kind of driver to do that. Maybe he would if this was Le Mans, but... <laughs> Oh yeah, I should uh, ask him about the report again. Which one? Yes. <laughs> we're still missing how many reports? We're missing we're missing Japan GP. We're missing the American thing. And the final. Tour de France. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, and Le Mans. And old editions of Le Mans. And, and Targa Florio. <laughs> Targa Florio. <laughs> yeah, top. Report writing after you uh, finish your PC. You should just do one sentence at a time in each, each like each day one sentence in every report and then in a few years we should have them all. I think you should write reports about the DS events. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> and Top has decided that he wants to uh, use the indicator Indicate again. again. It's just a uh, good luck moment now. I mean, even when he spun, his indicator was on, so... <laughs> yeah, I think we should rename him now. He's now Top Indicator. Also, he must have uh, filled up his liquid fluid reservoir because he ran out of it in the first that he did. So. By the amount of indicator use he has, it, that must be quite a bit of weight he's carrying around. <laughs> now let's look at the front again. We have distinct Marcos M.4 seconds in front. Has now lapped King Rowan. Comrade is only 7.4 seconds uh, adrift. Has now driven a personal best of 159.447. That's very strong. Only two tenths off my um, personal best and about two tenths better than my personal best in stint one. Same for me. Yeah, I think in Stint 1 we were pretty evenly matched. Like, like I mean, in, in my person I was pretty evenly matched, but the, like, the, the pace you were doing in the other stints. Yeah, I think the pace was quite even and you had very good tire wear in the in the first stint you, dri you yeah. were driving. driving. Yeah. And in the second stint I just got unlucky. Yeah. GD screwed me over by unboasting a car that was standing 90 degrees mm. yeah, quite sideways a, on the track. That was quite a pity. I mean, he was ghosted and then like, I was, I knew like, would he stop? And I thought like, yeah, if not, then you just stay ghosted. And then he unghosted, like, two meters in front of me. F. Yeah, for whatever reason, Knight Rider just said he's looking forward to your DES report. <laughs> oh man. Well, on the other hand, Flipsy uh, offered to join Orga team, and since he's the newest member, then let's just have him do it. True. True, we could do that. Just don't tell him it was never a thing before, so... Okay, let's go to the gaps again. Um, Marco, 6.4 seconds in front of Comrade. Then we have 
Uh, Eddie, 22 seconds behind Comrade. And 28 seconds behind Marco. Then we have Top Racer, one minute behind uh, Marco. Peachy, one minute 13 behind uh, Marco. And this can get quite close again because uh, at the moment Top yeah, is 12 seconds in front of uh, Peachy. It should be enough for P2, but better, better have a reserve. Then Casey in P6, only three seconds behind Peachy, and then Mega L, 32 seconds behind Casey, and 26 seconds in front of Kickmack, which is 2 minutes 15 behind the leader, and with this already lapped by Marco, and probably also by Comrade. Then Haku in P9 with a gap of 2.47 and about 31 seconds behind Kekmek and then we have King Rowan which is 1 minute 26 behind Haku and 4 minutes 11 behind Marco and that means he is already lapped twice Unfortunately, there are no battles to uh, show because all the drivers are a bit spread out. So let's look a bit at Peachy. And also, consider the fact that uh, this team has won most of the stints at the moment. This is the only team that has won two stints. The third one and the fifth one it doesn't look like they will win this stint but their teammates rx1 with distinct marco they look set to also win two stints with the fourth and sixth the first stint was a uh, won by this idiot, which is talking right now, and the second synth was won by the other idiot that isn't talking right now. Top has uh, recovered a bit. Four tenths faster in his uh, attempt to make up ground to Eddie and make up ground to Yerla. Let's see it's still if it's still four tenths when he arrives at the end of the third sector it's even five tenths faster now and we are coming to the happy hour again where the lap times get better and better Top now of the line can't improve himself, sadly. Although he had that much of a advantage, it wasn't enough. Lost ob obviously a bit in the last sector. Uh, quite smooth how he's driving just a pity he made the mistake because otherwise he could uh, be in the same pace and in the same league as Comrade and the 
yeah, at the moment. He has to settle down with P4. Oh, quite aggressive. He takes a lot of grass here. But was able to keep the car under control. Let's look at Eddie for a bit. They're uh, his teammates. Had horrible races most of the time. Some even broke up uh, after a few minutes during the stint. Intentional DNF, probably. Maybe unintentional. One has to see the footage of them. At the moment it was intentional DNF that we uh, entered. But Eddie is uh, lifting up the team again here. And does drive a good stint, only 27 seconds behind Marco. Had damage once, but all in all drives a good and collected stint. With the 159.663 as his personal best lap. So pretty strong. And if his teammates get better, and I have no doubt that they will get better with time, then we can also be aware of this league. Then we will have a, another strong one here. As we can see the conditions and the day of time gets later and later, it gets darker, the lights are on. I don't think we will have uh, really dark conditions at the end of the stint, but as we can see the, the track is changing. And this is one good feature of a uh, Gran Turismo 7 that we have with the changeable conditions, with the change of time. The races get a lot more interesting with that. Now Eddie has a problem, he has two drivers, he has to lap King Rowan and Kick Mac. And in the technical sections here, it's rather difficult to make room. But King Rowan, whoa, that that was that was dangerous. King Rowan wanted to make uh, room for Eddie, but it nearly backfired. Then Kick Mac is still quite a bit in front, so he doesn't need to uh, make room for Eddie now, maybe later on. again second stint driving and the second time he's leading the race this time uh, five point or six point is it five is it six is it five it is five five point uh, something seconds in front of comrade When 
he goes into the pit, he will need to repair the damage. But all in all, I think he will finish the stint in first again. And restore the honor of RX1. Yeah, sadly for RX1, it went all downhill already at the first stint, which wasn't uh, too strong because RX1 started from pole with RX2 in second. And unfortunately, RX1 again in the first stint through Ben, uh, which hadn't the uh, best of stints, fell down a few positions. Then we had the second stint where. Um, Crowhawk was driving, Crowhawk with fabulous pace, phenomenal pace, but unfortunately very mistake prone, had a lot of damage, uh, even had one pit stop where he forgot to refuel, and that brought them a lot behind. Then we had the third stint, which was Ben driving again. Ben was uh, collected at the start or had an incident in the formation lap with a DLL uh, car. Had a good comeback but the damage was done. Then we had stint 4 which Marco won. Then we had stint 5 um, which Thank you was driving. Solid stint but lost a bit of time there as well and then the last stint we have Marco driving again and he's leading then let's look at Comrade again he has fuel for about two more laps or at least one more lap I think he will uh, finish with 59 laps as well. He's also doing a great job driving consistently, not trying not driving too aggressive and just keeping the car together and safe. Now will he go into the pits or will he drive one more lap? He goes into the pits. I uh, don't know what happened to Nuschel because I can't hear him. Maybe he makes a break. Or he does a break. I don't know. But for Comrade I hope he refuels for 15 more laps. Or for 15 laps. Marco has gone into the pits as well, so both of them in the pits, but yeah, of course, Marco needs to repair damage, that will cost him three or four more seconds. Oh, Nuschel's mic has stopped working again, so I'm alone for now. Maybe he can make it work again, who knows. Yeah, Marco comes out in front of a uh, comrade, two seconds only. So comrade has made up a bit of ground. Now I'll just keep it safe until the end. Hop has climbed up to P3 again, probably because uh, Eddie still, because Eddie pitted as well, and Top needs to pit once more later on in the race. But yeah, Eddie as well. Eddie doing a great job in P4. 
then Peachy um, needs to go into the pits in this lap. Casey did go into the pits. He's refueling now. And Megael has uh, overtaken him for a short amount of time until he himself needs to go into the pits and I think this will be in, the in this or in the next lap because his tires don't look good anymore. They're pretty short on the right side. And it's a bit of a... Um, it's a bit strange because uh, Mikael at least when he was playing Gran Turismo 3 later uh, earlier a few years ago he was driving with the controller and he perfected the technique that he can go very long stints on the same compound for example, uh, racing hard tires, he could make it survive 33 laps in a Tokyo R246. And I heard uh, something from Nushal. Hello. Hello. You are Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. I've switched to my phone. No idea why my laptop refuses to pick up any microphone inputs. So. Stupid. Stupid. Absolutely. Well, I mean, my laptop is black and red too, so maybe he's picked up the RRC clown already. Yeah, probably. Now PG is in the pits. He is going to refuel and change tires. And that will probably be his last, last pit stop. I mean, I was suddenly gone and like, I I didn't realize that I was talking and talking and you just kept ignoring me and I was like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> Till I realized that for whatever reason, my microphone just stopped working again. How dare it. And you just kept on talking and you didn't even miss me. That's very sad. Yeah, My so heart sad. is broken now. I bet you were happy I was gone. Uh, I would lie if I would say no. <laughs> no, just kidding. Yeah, I love you too, Kanshi. <laughs> just kidding. No, I already thought your mic has stopped working. Or that you... <laughs> Why maybe... didn't you say anything? Uh, I don't know. I thought maybe you went to for a toilet break or something. I would have said so. <laughs> no, it's fine should have done it with the phone from the beginning to be honest yeah the conditions have gotten really dark now and we can see the different uh, light colors there are a few teams that drive with yellow colored lights and some that have a more white color like Pichiala and I think also um, the Lancer has white lights. I don't yeah, everyone except for the Jaguar and the second Mercedes are running white lights. Mm. Yeah, usually I'm I'm a fan of the yellow lights as well, but with this livery that we're running didn't really look right. Yeah, firstly that and uh, secondly I thought, yeah, uh, I think it's more natural to have a white light instead of a yellow one. It might be safer in the dark conditions. Now Mega Al has gone into the pits for the hopefully the last time. Picks up new yeah, tires. Yeah, should be a quick stint for him. Yeah, refuels a bit. Short. Yeah, Top will have to do one more stop, I think. I think he won't be going to the end. Yeah, but he's, I, I think... He's way clear of Peachy, so it's all good. 
I think 20 liters for uh, 25 minutes. Yeah, difficult. Yeah, he did like a five lap stint when he picked up the damage. Like he went into the pits again and fixed his car instead of doing 10 laps with damage. With I think it's understandable because with the damage you lose time and tire wear also goes through the roof and fuels consumption too. But there's one thing I forgot. We're talking about Top Racer. Well, he hasn't got his indicator on, so I'm not expecting anything from him at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm also not expecting a 7 lap N24 stint. Please, no. <laughs> That'll forever be stuck on him. <laughs> yeah, just uh, to tell the story, uh, we had a 24 hours Nürburgring uh, race back then where RRC participated in uh, Group 3 and Group 4. Group 3 was uh, filled with the team of our Dutch friends here. And then we had two other two teams in Group 4. Uh, one team was um, me, Nuschel, Shishi, uh, was it Comrade and Top. And top? top. No, Comrade didn't race that. Okay. It was just us four. You did the first one and then Shishi, I and Top um, did the other six. Yeah. And you ran the whole circus of the race. <laughs> <laughs> More or less, yeah. And yeah, uh, in this first stint that Top was driving, he did... Um, Normally we did a uh, six lap stints or five lap stints, more six lap stints. And Top then went out and drove and drove and drove and drove and drove and, drove and, drove and, and, and didn't wanted to pit. <laughs> <laughs> and we were screaming like, what the <laughs> fuck, why are you not pitting? I mean, it didn't cost us any time really, I mean... By how much did we win that race? Like, five minutes or so, or even more? We were it, was a, it was a lot. It, it, yeah, it was probably the most dominant win we've ever had. Yeah, to be fair, we only had uh, four opponents or something. Yeah, they <laughs> were all having nightmares of a race. True. Okay. It's kind of sad that we won't be able to repeat that, like, we have to do it with a Group 3 car now. But... I would have liked to do that race as a multi-class again. Yeah, me too. But, on the other hand, we also need to say that the Group 4 BOP is uh, even way more off than the Group 3 BOP. So, I don't know if this is uh, even helpful. I mean, like, my personal opinion is that on the not track, the BOP doesn't really play a big role. Like, as long as you stay on the track, you will have a decent result. That's my point on that. On Like, the BOP doesn't matter as much as on any other track, I would say. Yeah, I don't think you're wrong. That's uh, probably correct. I mean, we were... We were in the Group 4 Toyota lapping Group 3 cars because they kept crashing, so... That yeah. probably says everything you need to know about a needed BOP on that track. <laughs> Comrade is only three seconds behind Marco, so it's, he still is in the contention of maybe a stint win. But nevertheless, he looks very strong on here. And that was a good recovery considering in practice he had... He really struggled during practice. He really struggled to get to grips with the car. He oh. was a complete Karen. TLDR. <laughs> TLDR, he was a complete Karen, yes. Uh, complained about having too much uh, understeer, that the car doesn't turn. How the fuck can we be fast with that? He wants a different car. And look at him now. Driving a near perfect race without damage. 
without taking too many risks even driving the personal best lap so far and I think the best lap out of uh, all of us in the team and yeah that will probably be a win for RC1 and at the moment it even looks like it could be a one two which one. is a novum for us I believe yeah, especially with two RX cars racing, because usually they are the top runners. Yeah, uh, I think, except one race, I think every test race was won by RX. I think Chris and I won one. Like, of the WEC races. But I don't think Eric's was participating in that one, so that might have played a factor. Yeah, as I said, I think all except one. I think all except one, and the uh, one exception was that Barcelona race. Yeah, exactly. That's where Chris and I won. That was actually quite a good race. I mean, I hate that track, but it was pretty decent for me. Ladies and gentlemen, we have reached uh, one minute forty-four mi uh, one hour and forty-four minutes of the last synth. Sixteen minutes left to drive. About eight laps left for us. We're coming to a close, and quite honestly, I'm happy with that because I'm fucking tired. Now let's look like how it uh, is from the cockpit view. It's uh, pretty dark right now. Uh, you can't even see yeah, but the I driver. Gotta say that, <laughs> but I gotta say that this race from the organization kind of thing, it worked pretty well I would say. Like, the hosts were doing a good job, the streamers were working probably. If we can keep it up like this, it, it's a good start to the season. Top picked up a one second penalty. Who got a penalty? Top in the SS. He just cut that uh, jump oh. corner. Uh, okay. Yeah, unfortunately, not the best race for Top because uh, in stint 4 he was fighting for the victory or at least uh, for the stint win and this time it just went backwards a bit I wonder who the other driver of that car is that who that happened to <laughs> yeah but one good <laughs> one good stint and one bad stint but the bad stint wasn't, I mean, it wasn't really the fault of your own yeah, that's true. I mean, I would have probably botched it anyway somewhere down the line, so... Gotta say, I'm quite happy that I uh, have driven two stints without damage and pretty consistently, even uh, Absolutely. one one stint. Was a bit lucky with that, but still, still gotta achieve that. And second stint, yeah, didn't have the pace for that, but just was... Um, patient and throw for that I could yeah you laid the foundation for the win in the first sector essentially so in your first stint that's what I wanted to say then... yeah let's look at uh, Casey again And King Rowan is playing with the lights, and this is uh, something that we don't like to see here. Uh, 
distracting other drivers by flashing the headlights. This is not something we want to see. Especially when they are two laps ahead. Yeah, then he has absolutely no right to do that. Yeah, unless uh, KC caused the damage for him. But I don't know, I haven't seen anything. And even then, it's like, do it once if you're unhappy, but not for like the whole straight. Yeah. And then just report doing, it to the steward so they take care of it. Doing it repeatedly is um, very petty. Let's say that. Now let's look at Haku. Uh, 4 minute 20 behind uh, Marco, but 1 minute 28 or something in front of King Rowan. Again, props to him for uh, going to the end. Oh, he's lost it completely on Skyline. No, wait, that's McFlummy's. No, it's fine. Yeah. I'm tired. I was kind of able to save it. Yeah, absolutely. Like, just a small rally excursion. Mm. Oh, no, he stuffed it into the wall. Yeah, luckily this side is damaged anyway, so yeah, <laughs> doesn't hurt that <laughs> much. To say. <laughs> you already had damage, so it's not too bad. Then let's look at Kickmack. He's from a uh, GTA, from the Gran Turismo Alliance. We almost made it. Go, Kickmack. We started at position 11 this morning and finished at P8. Good job. Wait and see what the end result says. Uh, thanks to the GTA team. Jailbird, Kickmack, F Segundo. Ooh, top lining up for a fastest lap here. Oh, well, like, personal fastest lap. Was half a second up his best in the third sector. Almost. Let's see, um, last turn wasn't too good. Can he beat Comrade's lap time? 159.269, so I guess, yes, he did beat them. Because then this was top is now, Yeah, then Top is now the fastest RC driver. <laughs> Not that it really matters. Oh, he's trying to get even faster. Yeah, I gotta say, Top is really strong in the night. Yeah, Top is generally a pretty strong driver when he Absolutely. commits uh, to an event. But I don't think he'll be completely happy with this stint. No, obviously he will not be. If he makes mistakes, he's uh, pretty unhappy. Also, big shout out to Eddie because he's still in third place, 30 seconds behind Marco. And he has really uh, showed that the GTF team has some strong drivers. Also, he's the one who has uh, participated in the qualifying and made it to P3. Just sad to see that uh, it all went downhill right from the first lap. Of the first stint. Yeah, I think from one bad stint you can recover. But if you lose too much time and too many stints, you're good. Let's go. I think Marco also slowed down a bit. Um, he's driving, he's still driving fast, two minutes one, but I don't think he goes 
with the same um, aggressiveness into the laps as previously when it was a uh, sunlight. King Rome makes uh, room for him. Fair enough. Well done. Yeah, I think they've all reduced their pace a little bit, except for top. Yeah, that might be true. I think Top really is now challenging himself to go even faster. Yeah, that's always a good goal. Um, until you crash. Until you crash, yeah. <laughs> he that's the Crowhawk approach. <laughs> Whoa, half a... Oh yeah, there we go. Completely messed up the SS entry. But he was... Yeah, that's the penalty. One second penalty again. Yeah, he's in a position he very could. He's in yeah, a position where he can push because PGL is yeah. uh, quite a bit behind him and nobody else is really a threat. So, yep, he can do but that. But if you if you pick up engine damage, doing stuff like that, it might be another issue. But yeah, yeah, then it's then uh, then it was overconfidence. I mean, Top's best lap time is like his optimum is now 58.562. The fuck. So three tenths faster than Marco's fastest lap. Someone just ran over the 100 meter board and Top kicks it away. <laughs> <laughs> at least on my screen. Now let's look at the Mega L for. A few minutes. He's also doing a. He's also driving good pace now. Two, uh, two minutes or once. Con rather consistently. Now. And yeah, it's a. Uh, okay, King Roan here. He has to be. He has to be careful. And considering that uh, Mega Al had no uh, opportunity to really train with the wheel. Yeah, he was just doing practice sessions. Like, I think we did two, me and him, and he was on a controller. Yeah. Yeah, that's because uh, when he's yeah, home he had, with his at mother. His home, he has no space, yeah. yeah. With his mother, he has no space. It's a really small room, and he has his uh, working desk. And if he wants to play on the PS4, he more or less needs to switch his view to the monitor to the left. And it's a bit difficult to drive with the, with the wheel there, because when you have a wheel, you would uh, need the monitor right in front of you, and this is not possible. That's why he can't mount the wheel he has in his room. Yeah, but he's doing a very good job. I think he's definitely the strongest driver of that car. Yeah. Uh, the most impressive was, of course, the second stint where he was in. Uh, so the second stint there was, but the first stint of him driving I think he was fourth overall yep exactly I was very impressed with that fourth. I also already told him that for the next race we wanted like he might we might put him in a faster car like, yeah have to speed. yeah the thing is we had him as a reserve driver and there was a, a space in the 13 with our player at Masma so we used him here but yeah, Mega also saved uh, my life at uh, at the six hours of Dragon Trail, for example, where he drove very mature drives and saved us P3. And generally, the, the GTS race. 
Yeah, in the GTA. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And generally, he has always been the fireman in need. Yeah, he's the Joker. <laughs> exactly. He's not the ultimately fastest, but he's very consistent and reliable. So. Yeah, absolutely. And if he gets a chance to train, and if he gets a chance to get up to speed, then he's um, very, very good driver. Uh, Skylight Racer, uh, Haikano. On which posi position is your team comfy, and on which position is the team of DLL Flipsy? Um, there's good yep. news and there's bad news. <laughs> the good news is uh, my team is going to win, as it seems. And the bad news for the team of DLL Flipsy is that they retired in the fifth stint and to not drive in the sixth. And yes, they really retired. Uh, Charles said in the chat that they re that they retire. Yep, was predictable. Again, one last shout out to uh, Karpan Wittlich Esports, to Casey, and to Rotec, and to Duggars for debuting and driving a very good. Uh, okay, from the beginning again. Congratulations to them again for their debut and P4 in the standings. Yeah, it's very impressive considering they signed up yesterday. <laughs> so, very good. Though. They also talked about that after the start when Philip got hit by our player. Yeah, the start is in five. I thought it was Johnny, but could also have been Flipsy. I don't know a lot has happened here and we just saw King Rowan uh, doing an accident and now we need to switch to um, to Eddie because he will go for 58 laps and will be the first to finish with a gap of um, 35 seconds if I read that correctly then we yep, have Top Racer. Point. Top Racer finishing with 50.675 seconds. That's and interesting. It shows 50.675 for you and it shows 50.558 for me. Oh, King Rome with another mistake. Oh. Comes back to the track. Now and we'll finish with a gap of seven minutes twenty four. Who's the next to finish? It's Haku. Yep, Haku. Has, and Kickmack has binded as well in the final like in the second to last corner. Oh come on, what's what's wrong now? Peachy is approaching the finish line too. Top has meanwhile finished. Oh yeah. yeah. Top has finished. Oh, Casey and Peachy very close after two hours only se separated by two seconds. Yeah, true. Next is Marco and yeah, Marco takes the stint win. Ten seconds ahead of Conrad. Uh -huh. Yeah. And pretty Conrad much. takes the overall win. Congratulations. And then we have Megal as the last driver who finishes the stint 58 laps again. Yep, on zero fuel. <laughs> and he's out of fuel. <laughs> <laughs> 10 meters from the finish line. That's a uh, perfect fuel calculation. <laughs> okay, then uh, let's uh, review the, the gaps. 9.173 seconds for Comrade. Wait a second, wait a second, I'll put it in. Comrade was? 9.173. 9. 
35.206 for Eddie. Yep, top. 50.575. Yep. Then P. Chiala 153. KC 155. Yep. 55, yep. Mega L 225. Yep. Kick Mac 352. Yep. Haku 537. And King Ron 724, right? Exactly. Yep, alright. Yeah, so then it's our RRC1 who has taken the win from Richard Missions. And then 2 minutes 13 ahead of RRC2, so one lap. And they have finished 1 minute ahead of Rx2, so that's the top 3. Then KWE, Rx1, DLL2, RRC3, DLL1, GTA1. Uh, where's P10? There, RRC4. Then GTF1. And finally DLL3. But they only, they only did one stint, so... Yeah, we will post the uh, quick results. Uh, well, you will post the quick results quite soon, I guess, in the Discord server. Yeah, and I can do that. <laughs> and then... Yeah, we need to... Then you guys can send in all uh, things you uh, think where some driver was in the wrong incidents, uh, other things, violations, whatever. You send them in, then the stewards will look upon it and yeah, that's pretty much it. I think the end results will be posted maybe next or in two weeks whenever the results are finished and yeah again thank you very much for uh, participating thank you very much for watching I hope you had fun and hopefully till next time the sixth hour race of Monza this time with WEC rules and with multi-class Hope to see you there. Yeah, and if anyone is now willing to participate, hop on the Discord server, find some friends and join us. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's a very good idea, <laughs> because <laughs> we need those 14 car grids. That would be perfect, yes. Okay, then until next time. Yep, goodbye. Goodbye.